Good morning, new day. We're continuing on with the uh, conversion from the Dana 30s to Dana 44s. This is what we finished yesterday. We got the long arms, everything done. We got the new U joint, and I gotta fix the caliper, and uh, we'll be good to go. As you can see, if he starts flexing, he is gonna get into his fender flares. That's why we're gonna be building fender flares like I have on mine and Tanya's, which are gonna be metal. You can step on them. But everything else is uh, pretty good, pretty tight. So let's fix that uh, leaky caliper that I nicked. We are going to turn the car around and uh, start installing the rear axle. All right, we got the uh, caliper fixed and uh, we made a big mess, but I'm gonna turn it around and we'll start on the rear in a little bit after lunch. No shocks in the front, that's why it's so balanced. got both axles here got the rear one out so this one doesn't have any brake lines on it hard lines and we're gonna reuse from the James's because already has an extended um, cable on it for the rear and the only thing we're gonna do is because that one has a soft lines on that side we're gonna take this off put it on that axle and then flare our new ends where we need them instead of where they're going inside the uh, caliper basically or drum brakes in this case so we're gonna do that then we're gonna place it we're gonna be welding a couple of e-brake uh, brackets that need to work for the e-brake in there but that all can be done on the vehicle when we place it in there the only thing hard part is doing the brakes so i'm gonna start on that doing the brakes to switch over to that axle
we got the uh, brake line made and uh, we got the axle in place I'm just gonna put little bolts in there to hold the lines down but I needed to have the bolts u-bolts in there to see where the soft line is gonna run above the leaf spring or under it so that's something I will decide later on but right now the axle is in we can throw some tires on but that will be probably tomorrow because it's been a long weekend with doing this I actually don't get to have a weekend so tomorrow's Monday after work we'll continue all right, so on the other day, just got off work and uh, we're going to be continuing working on this thing. What we got to do today is get the e-brake cable and I got to mount it center up there because right about here, it's way too close to the double carton. And what I did on mine is I just moved this whole cable and mounted it up there with this whole thing. So just got to take this off, make a couple brackets and bolt it up there. And then we going to do the shackles in the back of the axle, put in the drive shaft in and get the e-brake and regular brakes wired in. So lots of things to do, not enough daylight. Let's get it going. bolts so now we can uh, take the shackles off and put in the new shackles and check the condition of the bearings on this I mean not the bearings the condition of the bushings on the leaf springs make sure that they are still with an usable spec so we're switching out these shackle to these shackles and this shackle is offset like this versus the stock one just being straight. That will le let the leaf spring rock back more, creating a lot smoother ride. When you are tightening the leaf springs, you never want to tighten anything uh, when it's all drooped out. You want to tighten it when it's all on the ground. In this case, what I did is I jacked it up until it got off the jack stands so I can tighten all these bolts up and then uh, it'll be good to go because it's going to droop out and uh, then it's going to make a lot of squeaking noise. Whenever you do the longer shackles for your leaf springs a lot of times you will run into your exhaust pipe and uh, what I found the best thing to do is to just chop it right about here starting from the top down and that way it's gonna be out of your life and not rattling the whole time next thing I want to do is I gotta install these shock pin eliminators you can get them at the rough stuff and they go in the place where your shock, upper shock little pin goes. Because there's it's only being held by a couple uh, quarter inch or probably 516 bolts. And I had so many times those pins fail. So what I normally started doing now is I put this up and then I run a weld bead around it to keep it secure so it never will fall off. And then your new shock is going to be hooked up by the... Um, shock eye instead of a cross pin so this is what we're going to use here and then i can measure what the shock uh, length i need for the rear because right now it's sitting under its own weight and we'll go from there so basically 
I am uh, figuring out what kind of shocks to order. Don't mind the glasses. I am older than you guys think. My eyesight is starting to go. Um, but uh, yeah, so it looks like the rear will be running 22 and a half inch shocks and then the front will be running 31 inch shocks fully extended links and then compression links uh, according to what the box shocks has so i got those measurements i'll send them off to james so he can order those and they can come in in time for us to install them and take it for a test rip probably saturday today is monday and Wednesday morning I'm flying out for work to Seattle so I won't be here for the rest of the week um, starting Wednesday or Tuesday night and uh, as you're watching this I'm already on the plane flying all right we moved that box for the e-brake cables there we got a couple e-brake cables from uh, Jeep ZJ which is Grand Cherokee from like 96 to 98 and that's where these bracket, these cables are gonna go into our original um, e-brake box. And then what's what it's gonna do? It's gonna come around the front right here, and then we're gonna have them mounted, and we're gonna have a little uh, bolt that's gonna hold them together, so we can pull e-brake whenever we need to because the way these e-brakes work is by pulling them out they lock up the uh, emergency brake so we just got to weld a couple brackets that will hold the cables then I got to make a bracket to hold the soft line right back here because we have pretty good area right here where they can be out of the way I can put another little tab here if anything yeah. we'll take a look and that will complete the rear end. We can put the drive shaft in, put the uh, wheels on, and it'll be ready for next week's uh, job is uh, to cut the fenders out and build the flat fenders. So here you go. Another Rocklander almost complete. Don't forget to come and check it out at Carson Car Show or show and shine for off-road vehicles check out description down below thanks for watching <music>